Hey everybody, I'm here with our Burso for music recordings and uh Jeff Big Tiki dude, um, who books tons of shows. Uh and between the both know about every surf band on the planet. Um uh, and today we want to talk about SG101 and what is going on between music recordings and Big Tiki Dude, uh, and how they join forces uh for this year's uh weekender. Would you like to start? Yeah. <laughs> Take um, the more the merrier. The more help I can get, the better. Um, I'm, I'm finding that, you know, in this world of trying to share things and uh, get the info out there, that it's, it's hard. So when you have more people uh, splitting pieces of the pie, uh, whether it be money or time and effort or just clicking share, you know, the more people that help spread the word, the more people, you know, can find out about the event and show up. There's still people that like surf that never heard of the event. And it's it's a sad but true type of a situation. I know. Uh, I know personally uh, of, of what you're talking about, you know, about when all you need is one share to make a difference. Um, but you guys have known each other a long time. Um, and Art, you're from Philly, uh, which I'm representing here today. Um, how did you guys meet? Like, you went to L.A. What was your initially the reason you went to L.A.? And how did you guys meet and, and uh, form that friendship? Let's see if my story jives with uh, Jeff's. But <laughs> Well, first of all, who wouldn't want to move away from the East Coast to SoCal, right? <laughs> I did. Okay. I did it. I'm just, I'm, you know, just being funny, but, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to visit the East Coast, but I couldn't imagine living there full time. And the same for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think in 1998, I was here with the Space Cossacks, a band on my label. And I think we had maybe four, five shows in SoCal. And Jeff was at all the shows. And I was like, who is this guy? Like, so passionate about surf. And, um uh before facebook and stuff there was a yahoo group uh called cowabunga and i didn't get on that till 2000 so i didn't get a computer till 2000 so i didn't meet art until well did you come out and come to the record company or the, or the record distribution place that i worked at before yeah. the tour so he was uh in socal pushing some of his product and had a meeting with the independent uh buyer at my work I was the quality control in the in the warehouse, and uh, the guy told him, you know, well, Art had probably heard about me, but uh, the guy in the in the where or the guy in the buying office, you know, said that you know we should talk. So we chatted a little bit then, but then when he came out on tour with the Space Cossacks, we we talked a little more then. Everybody knew a big tiki dude. So you well, know. the the re how I first got into all the surf stuff was I was a. Uh, going to watch the shows at the surfing museum in Huntington Beach, but I started helping all the bands with their gear. You know, I'd set up the pop-ups and set up all the chairs for the people to come and watch. But, you know, the bands would show up and I figured, hey, they're not getting paid. The least I can do is help them lug their gear, you know, from the from the sidewalk over to where it needed to be set up. Awesome. Yeah, it is, it is pretty... Uh pretty damn cool to uh to start at the ground and and work your way into it um art what is your part in promoting uh the weekend of this year uh just like last year is the first year i joined as a partner and we should say there's another guy that's part of it and it's christopher burkhart yeah and uh, a great guy who's very um, experienced in promoting shows down here. His company is Stellar Shows, and the website is stellarshows.net. And he puts on all different kinds of roots rock, blues, rockabilly, western swing, you know, anything that's retro and, uh, you know, revival type of uh, vibe, sounds type thing. He did a weekender with another guy uh, two weekends ago called The Bash, and it was blues, jump blues, and rockabilly and uh western swing type stuff but how did you guys because you met yeah I, I, he got a hold of me through some of the tiki people and he was doing some shows with tikiaki orchestra 
and they wanted some vending and he wanted to DJ. So I was DJing at the vending thing before the Tikiaki show. And then I told him about, you know, the surf bands that I'm involved with. And if he ever wanted any surf, you know, that I was the, the go between for him because, you know, when you're really in one scene, it's hard to know about everything from another scene. So even still, he's still a little green behind the, the ears on, on the surf, like everything that's going on. Not that I know everything, but, you know, you know, everything. Come nah, on. No, no, no. Anyways. <laughs> You know, so he'll come to me and ask me about certain bands, you know, but he also books at the smaller uh, Secret Island, the Tiki Bar that you went to when you were out here that one time. Mm -hmm. He books shows there also. So two years ago, we did a, a pre-show at Secret Island, and then he was doing a show where Tiki Aki was playing at the hotel that we're at now. And he goes, hey, come and look at this ballroom. You know, we, we saw it. And he goes, what do you think about doing your SG-101 there? Because the Elks or the uh, VFW in Hollywood, as nice as the place was, it just didn't work. There's too many restrictions with the day and the parking and the Hollywood Bowl right next door and the hours. It was just, it was too many headaches. And I was like, I need something bigger. And I've always wanted the event to be a three day weekender, more like Viva Las Vegas, more like Tiki Oasis, more like Surfer Joe Festival in Italy. You know, so between Christopher you know, finding the venue and being the go-between with the venue and art stepping up and helping with the promo and a little bit of uh, financing, you know, and some connections, you know, it seems like we're a good team, you know, working together, all pulling for the same, uh, the same goal. What sort of, what sort of connections would they be? I think it's just knowing who to promote to like, you know, companies and, or, uh, uh, news outlets, you know, magazines, online, you know, people, you know, just different. From, from regular media to social media, even though uh, Jeff is pretty good with uh, Facebook, but they're, you know, he's not on Instagram. So that's another thing that we push. Yeah. Art, or we had an Instagram before, but somehow we, we forgot to remember the password. So Art just started the new uh, Instagram page. If, if you can uh, give the, the name of it. I saw that. Yeah. Or if you can put the link to it. Sure. In the, so Absolutely. the Facebook and the Instagram, both of those. And then the SG1 or circuitar 101 festival.com and the stellar shows.net. All those links would be appreciated. Down yeah, below. Yeah. I'll, they say. <laughs> well, they'll be actually way down. But, anyways, <laughs> um, so there's two, two questions I want to ask. First, um, I did reach out to Dave in the in the Gatsby ones, and I was supposed to have an interview at some point. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But what is special about their appearance at SG uh, 101 uh, Weekender this year? One ticket? You take it since you booked them. You know, <laughs> specifically. So you know. I've, I've told the, the story a couple times, but I, li I like to tell it again. So there's been people over the years that have been bugging me over and over and over again about getting the ghastly ones. And they haven't played in 14 years. And I kept asking Norm, it's like, hey, I've seen you 40, 50 times, but there's people that want to see you. You know, and he goes, I'm not going to happen. Not going to happen. Nope, 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 not going to happen. I'm like, all right, fine. You know, whatever. And... um you know, one day he called me and he goes, hey, we, we reissued one of our albums and it's selling really, really well. I'm going to turn 60 next year. He goes, if it's going to ever happen, it's next year. He goes, help me get a couple connections for some international shows. And he goes, and then we'll do SG-101. I was like, whoa, serious? He goes, yeah. And I go, okay, but I want a USA exclusive on this. So they did Spain in May and yeah. at the Surferama uh, Festival and they're going to do the wild o festival um mexico in mexico like three weeks after us but uh the ghastly ones appearing at circuit 101 is a exclusive for the united states and we're quite stoked about that awesome so but awesome. fan and if you've never seen them or you want to see them again you have to come to socal the birthplace of surf to see them <laughs> it's usually it's usually everybody else that's doing air quotes <laughs> oh, I know. I'm just silly. <laughs> um, so one band I really, really dig, uh, the Merman. Um, there's something interesting going on there as well. With, oh, yeah. I'm yeah. a big fan. And I wasn't sure if Art was, but he, he says he likes them. 
<laughs> I, so, do. I do. So, um, anyways, uh, they haven't played in SoCal in like ten or twelve years, and uh, they've never played at Surf Guitar One Hundred One. And being now that it's a three day event, the way we set up, you know, during the day on Friday. We did it last year with Tikiaki because they take a while to set up. So the Merman's one of those bands where they can't just show up and set up in 15 minutes like a regular surf band. Takes them a while. Not three or four hours like it used to, but still a little while and sound check and stuff. So I was like, now's my chance. Now that it's a bigger event, now that we have a little bit more money, now that we have a bigger stage and we have that time on Friday afternoon, you know, I reached out to them. And I was like, okay, hey. You know, now I can pay you the money that you want, and we have the the space and the and the time to get you to set up. So it's happening, and they're going to play two to three hours. And I'm just over the moon about this because I've been a long time fan. I've seen them a few times, even gone up to Northern California to, to see them. You know, and some people it's not their cup of tea, but if you're into them, you got to come and see them, especially if you're in SoCal or anywhere nearby. You know, because they don't get down here that often. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, it's an important band, Ryan. You know, uh, they're very different and unique. But I mean, even in the 90s, they were one of the few surf bands that were signed to a major label, I think. Right. Yeah. They were on Mesa Records, which is a subsidiary of Atlantic. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of people that like the Merman that aren't into normal surf. You yeah. know, so when you play in NorCal, they'll bring <laughs> people. And there will only be five people there that I know from the normal surf crowd. So there's a big crossover, you know, with yeah. them. A lot of people say that about this band. What's that? I can't see. Oh, yeah. Another uh, band that crosses over into different genres. Yeah, a lot of people in rock and garage and the spooky uh, scene for them. I saw them last night. Uh, nice. Actually. They, were, they were great. Um, Did you go? To the the luau by the lake event westchester oh, okay no westchester. yeah uh, westchester you know where westchester is art yeah i mean i don't think i ever went there for shows but that's cool yeah it was it was odd it, an odd place but it was beautiful the venue's really cool um uh last band i want to ask you about is the boss martians what is uh uh what is evan up to in, in why specifically should you be talking about him this year? Let, let me chime in real quick. I've had them twice before, and they're great. They put it on an amazing show. But Art has very big news regarding them. Uh, the big news is that they're putting out their first album since 2008, and their first surf album since 2001. Because for a while, they left the surf scene and did yeah. some power pop garage punk thing. And they were pretty successful with it, but Evan, you know, his uh, love for surf is still there, and he's coming back, and it's a great record. Awesome! Is, is, that, is that the is, thing that we're posting with the blue, the blue logo? Yeah, yeah, and they're going to be selling it. You know, it'll be at, at the, the event. festival for the first time, and, and it'll be on vinyl and CD. Is is that like the the debut of it? Like, yeah, the really like well, record the, the, party or? The record release party is in Seattle on the 19th. A few days before, yeah. Uh, the weekend before, but they'll they'll have it at SG11 also. Okay. Uh, before we go, um, I want you to mention two things. Uh, either one of you can take. Uh, the vendors, because I'm sure you have a lot of people involved, being that it's starting last year, was you, it turned into a week or, weekender, which I want you to talk about. Um, which I believe was inspired by the Surfer Joe Festival. I could be wrong. Uh, oh. But also talk about um, your sponsors and, and how it is to work with them and how excited they are about, about the event. All right, one, more, one more thing about a band, but also the Untamed Youth. Deke Dickerson that does rockabilly type music, uh, he started doing surf back in the, I think it's 86, 87 era. So they've done a few reunions over the years, but the last time they played was eight years ago for the Norton Records um, benefit show. So not quite as long as the Ghastly Ones, but uh, that's still pretty cool. And some of the guys are in Missouri, so they're flying out here for that. So that's one other big, big reason for people to come is uh, uh, Untamed Youth to do 
amazing, fun, super high energy show. And they're, so they're doing two, two shows, one for us and one for Tiki Oasis the following weekend. But for us, they're going to do three quarters instro, one quarter surf. And at Oasis, they'll do three quarter vocal and one quarter. And that's at your request to do the extra instrumental. Actually, Deke brought that up uh, on his own. So I was like, sounds good to me. Nice. Uh, Anti-vocals, I just like it on a smaller a smaller percentage. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so tell me about, let, let's get back to the vendors. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, chime in one day you know, about the band thing. We had Fender last year, but you know so, Jeff, Jeff can tell you and more about it. Here's the flyer for anybody that wants to see that. Take a screen grab. And then, uh, so some of the big, big sponsors right off the top, we have uh, Fender Guitar, and they're giving us a uh, $3,000 custom shop Stratocaster that was quilted maple uh, burst, like a black burst, black into gray. And it's beautiful. I'll, I'll be posting some more pictures soon. I, I did some a couple weeks back, but uh, they weren't perfect. So he's going to reshoot it. Um, we also have quilter amplifiers. Uh, the couple different choices of what we're going to be getting. So we're still uh, working on that. And then Surfy Industries, that's Lorenzo and Ted Pilgrim and Bjorn's company. You can see it right behind you. Yeah, there you go. Surfy Bear. They, you guys they know, get... where they, you know where this is from? um well i'm assuming it comes from sweden but i'm not sure oh it's the one all the, all the all the bands that yeah all the bands that played it yeah yeah, yeah. i remember um anyways last year uh they gave us a, a gold anodized uh surfy bear there was only three one for italy one for us and one for the high tide festival so i'm not sure what we're getting this year but probably some sort of reverb so that's very cool we appreciate that and then also uh, lace guitars or lace pickups. Um, they have a Taliki guitar. It's like a telly, but it uh, has bamboo and tikis and stuff on it. So they call it a Taliki. <laughs> so that's that's some of the big sponsors. And then there's tons more of uh, of um, labels. Maybe you can go over some of the ones on the front, on the top and the bottom. Well, without my glasses, it's not going to be that easy. No. Um... What about the t-shirt people that are always there, your friends? Um, I'm not sure who you're referring to. Uh, you might need to edit this out, Ryan. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Okay. So here's some of those, here's some of the sponsors that we have. Um, we have Taboo Recordings and oh, yeah. uh, partnered with Reverb International Magazine. That's Ken. He's uh, for a few years done the Exotica Modern Magazine. So he's he's uh, stretching out, and he's got the label and uh, the new surf magazine. So that's pretty cool. Of course, music recordings, art. He's been a longtime sponsor. Um, Double Crown Records, um, High Tide Recordings. And then down here, we have Surf Cookie from Greece, Otitis Media Records. Uh, my buddy Paul or Jorge from Radio Free Bakersfield. I just did his show earlier today. Uh, Caveman Vintage Music in LA, very cool shop. If you ever come Great to LA for, for the SG101, you got to swing by Caveman before or after. Uh, Surf King Surfwear out of Atlanta, That's Georgia. That's where I was in. Okay. And sometimes they do the SG101 uh, Sean Dickinson um, print. And then, of course, Lee from Dionysus Records. Uh, he's done surf over the years, but he's also known for garage and uh, um, tiki music. And then real quick, I've got a bunch of sponsors on the back also. We have Austin Ribbon Microphones, Alameda Guitars and Pedals, uh, Vintage Guitar Magazine, KXLU Radio, Fiberglass Jungle Radio, GTF Instrumental, that's a 24-7 uh, station out of Russia. 24-7, surf, no commercials, GTF Instrumental, check that out. Uh, Clint Beachwood's A Day at the Beach podcast. Rockin' and Surfin' on WAIF out of Cincinnati. Storm Surge of Reverb, that's Hunter's Station, WTUL in New Orleans. Um, Paradise Cove, that's DJ Dottie's show on GTF. Uh, Rattlesnake Guitar Cables. Reverb Junkies DVD, it's a documentary about the SoCal surf scene from about 10 years ago. Cousin Mary at KFJC, that's the Reverb Hour. Um, we have Tom, uh, Tommy J 
at Laguna Tropical Surf. That Sunday is five to seven in Laguna Beach. He does a mix of Hawaiian and uh, surf music. And then, of course, um, Jam and James Riley with Catching a Wave. He, uh, that's on GTF and a couple other formats. Nocturne Pedals and then the Colorado Instrumental Fanzine. That's another magazine that just came out recently. So I believe that covers... What about uh, Clint Beachwood? We talk about yeah, him. yeah, I got Clint. Yeah, uh, Elliot Kendall. Well, he doesn't really have a name, but our, our buddy Elliot, that he, he's amazing. He posts, the, he, he puts the flyers all over SoCal and NorCal at record stores and music shops and stuff. Uh, he sells records and, and CDs at the show, and he's got some really amazing stuff from all over. And then one other thing I wanted to mention is uh, Tom Laura, a.k.a. Big Toe, did the great artwork for the front. And then my buddy Jason at Custom Deluxe, that's the little uh, Iron Maiden looking thing there. He did the back layout and the printing of this and the full size poster. So check oh, out cool. Deluxe if you if you like uh, if you like some of the flyers that you've been seeing online. Jason at Custom Deluxe has been doing a lot of those. Awesome, awesome. Are, are you, sorry you asked, Ryan. You got that long <laughs> list. No, no, no. That's that's perfect. We want to include everybody. Um, but before we go, before the time runs out, I want to give you a chance to list the bands. Okay, so first of all, the um, the event is at the Golden Sales Hotel, uh, the Crystal Ballroom, and the PCH Room, which we call the Taboo Tiki Room, and um, it's uh, three days in the ballroom, and then just Saturday and Sunday in the, the PCH Room, and the bands go back and forth, uh, so <clears throat> the city. Uh, it's in Long Beach, California. It's on PCH, just south of 7th Street. I don't think the actual address is on the flyer, but go to surfguitar101festival.com and the address is on there. The hotel rooms for the event are all sold out, but there's nearby hotels. So if you go to that website, we recommend other hotels that are nearby. Great. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down the, the schedule of all the bands in order time-wise. So Friday... From 6 to midnight, we have the Manakuras, which is a tiki surf kind of super group. And then Insect Surfers, 45th anniversary at 7.15. And then at 8.30 till midnight, we have the Mermen. They're going to play two hours, take a little break, and then play another hour or so. So I'm stoked about that. Um, Saturday, we start at 11 a.m. in the main room. We show the Sound of the Surf documentary that Tom Duncan was working on. And he passed away, so John Blair has taken over and he's going to be uh, finishing that and hopefully find a distributor for it. But we're going to show it again for anybody that missed it last year. Then uh, John Paul, that's uh, in many bands, he will be interviewing Will Glover from the Pyramids. And then after that, we start with the bands. We have Strings of Flame from Mexico at 1 p.m. Then it goes in order by hour. Then we have Lords of Atlantis. That's a super group. Uh, Martin Cilia from Australia. The Wise from Japan, that's it's the only performance is they're doing SG-101 only. No NorCal, no San Diego, no Oasis, just SG-101. Uh, the Scimitars, that's the band that you saw a couple of years ago where it's a, a hybrid of surf, Easter music. And they have a new uh, record coming out, right? What's that? They have a new record coming out. Yeah, be available at the show. Uh, Dirty Fuse from Greece. Love these guys. Saw them at Surfer Go. Excellent band. Yeah. Been uh, wanting to have them for years. Of course, Lorenzo, Surfer Joe, coming back. The Safaris of Wipeout and Surfer Joe and Point Panic fame, we're getting them. Um, the Coffin Daggers from New York, we're having them Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, they'll be doing their darker, more spooky stuff. And then on Sunday, they'll be playing the whole Eliki tribute album. That Eliki is the Japanese version of the instrumental surf music. Um, and then we get into the heavy stuff. We've got the Untamed Youth Reunion and the Gassy Ones Reunion. Um, Taboo Tiki Room for Saturday, 3.30, 4.30, 5.30, the Verb Tones from Portland, Oregon, 6.30, 7.30, 8.30. These are half-hour sets and a half-hour break in between. Desolate Coast from Seattle, really band, really great band. A couple of the members used to be in the Verb from uh, about 10 years back. Um, then Burlesque Dancing after that. Sunday night in the Taboo Tiki Room, 1.30, 2.30, 3.30, the Evan Stones from Seattle. And then 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, we have the Sea Topians from Boise, Idaho. Not quite Pacific Northwest, but we're, we're sticking them in that group. And then burlesque dancing until 9 o'clock. 
um, Sunday at the back in the ballroom starting at, at uh, noon. We'll have a, an interview with Tim Fitzpatrick, the drummer of the Lively Ones. And then after that, we'll do half and half Atlantics from Australia and Shadows from England tribute set. Yvonne from the Madeira and Space Cossacks and Martin Cilia will be trading off lead and rhythm and doing Atlantics and Shadow songs. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. Then at 1 p.m., we have the Legends of the 60s Surf Jam. So a lot of the 60s bands, some of the people have passed on. Some of them don't play anymore. Some of them move far away. So we're throwing all these guys together, and they're going to do like two songs each of the band that they were in. So it's a whole hour of 60s guys jamming together. Oh, wow. Then um, Iowa area, I believe, the Surf Zombies. Been meaning to have them for quite a few years. Uh, from Texas, we had Three Balls of Fire. That's Mike Vernon's band. Uh, L.A. favorites, the Volcanics. There's those guys that wear the sweaters and the ties. And they're super high energy, frat rock surf. Um, from the East Coast, uh, Rhode Island, Boston area, the Nebulas. And they have a new album out on Double Crown. Uh, of course, Art said the Boss Martians and their new, al uh, new EP um, on music and No Count Records. The Out of Sights, that's Chris Sprague's band. He used to be in the Sprague Brothers, and he's also yes. played with for the years. And he plays drums with low straight jackets. He's done a spy EP, and then he's so he's going to play the whole EP, and then he's going to do some Euro instro uh, from the 60s, not shadows, but anything else that's in Europe from the 60s. So, like uh, um, Sweden and like the whole Rautalanka sound. And then some of the stuff from like the Netherlands or maybe Spain, you know, England, anything that's Euro instro that's not shadows, they're going to do some of that stuff. And then, of course, we're going to finish it up with the Coffin Daggers and their Eliki set. Whew. Wow. Three days, 27 bands. You know, you want to see this. That's a pretty intense list. <laughs> you know, always tell me that I need to cut it shorter, that I have too many bands. And I tried. But then, like, right before I announced the whole lineup, I added, like, four or five more. I, I have a problem. <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys. Before our time runs out, I'm going to give you four minutes to tell me anything else that I may not have asked about or that people should know about the uh, festival this year. Not, not all me, but we can mention that there is a chance that there's going to be the fathoms are coming back the first album since 2007 i believe the album's almost finished but there's two songs that are done and we're going to try to have them uh on a split seven inch the first two songs they've done and like i said since 2007 and i think the vinyl is going to be ready it's going to be a split ep with draculina and uh exclusive at the festival we hope jeff's been pushing for that so he's uh he's like you got to do it so we're working on it excellent um, the other big thing is the food. Well, first of all, all the vendors and labels and stuff will be vending at the event. So make sure you bring a lot of money. Uh, the ATM always runs out. So get cash somewhere else off site and bring it. But we're going to have food and drink. <clears throat> so um, last year it sold out. So if you want to come, get your tickets now um we don't want you showing up and being like oh i can't get in so we're really really trying to tell people this is something that's important to you I, I think that it's really really a big deal some of these bands you know either one exclusive show or just a few on the west coast it's, it's a not to miss show you know for people that are into this scene um don't be like oh i want to see it streamed on tv we're not streaming like surfer joe does you got to be there to see it Maybe somebody will post a video or two on YouTube. That's not the same. You got to come and witness this. Surf's one of those things where you only get goosebumps when you watch the show in person. I've never gotten goosebumps from a video. So you got to be there. Please go to <laughs> stel stellarshows.net uh, to get the tickets. Just scroll down a little bit to the SG101, Surf Guitar 101 Festival uh, site. Um, there's three different nights that you can buy or three different days. If you buy all three, or if you click the three-day pass, you save like 40 bucks. So one of the days is almost free. Oh, wow. Wow. And there is seating and a dance floor, right? Yeah, well, there, there's VIP seating where you get a guaranteed seat, or there's general admission 
where you might be able to grab a seat, but we can't guarantee it. So if you need a seat, make sure you get the VIP seating, you know, or a seat, you know. And then there's a huge dance floor where if you want to be in front of the stage and, you know, shake your tail feather, we got that covered also. But it's a big box. Old six to seven hundred people last year we were like about three quarters full so we're we're expanding how many tickets we can sell but just by a little maybe like 50 or 100 so again last year we sold out if you're interested in coming don't dilly dally don't try to buy at the door get them in and get them get them in advance awesome uh just one last reminder there's going to be a link to stellar shows music recordings um also, the the socials for SG101 uh, Festival, and uh, I want to thank Art and uh, Jeff for coming on and talking about this. I know this is one of the interviews I look forward to every uh, every year, and I'm glad to have you both on this time. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. As appreciate, always. I appreciate it a lot, man.